Hi, it's Jen and welcome to my channel. And today I am so excited to be talking to Jacqueline Wallach. So I did Jacqueline's um, Connecting Conversations thing through her, um, your story starts here. And it was just so helpful for me to figure out what questions to ask my grandma and people in my family to learn more about my family history. And it's been really healing and awesome to learn more about my maternal grandmother and my paternal grandfather, both of whom I've never met. And I'm so excited to go further through this journey. So I will introduce her now. So Jacqueline Wallach is a genealogical, genealogical researcher and storyteller who believes we are all supposed to be here. Jacqueline is a proud member of the Association of Professional Genealogists through experience, online trainings, and conferences. Jacqueline has built her skills as a genealogist. With a keen eye for researching and a heart for creating authentic connections, Jacqueline guides her clients to weave their family stories through genealogical research in a way that reveals there's more to us than meets the eye. We each have a lineage and family that came before us and even after us in order for us to be exactly who we are today. When she's not researching, Jacqueline loves to explore gardens and old estates, play with her hashtag foster fail cat roo, do yoga, hike with her fiance, travel, learn new languages, or at least cool words, and watch friends on repeat. So hi, Jacqueline. Hey, how are you? Oh, Good. I'm so excited. Yeah. So can you tell us what is genealogy and family history? Are they the same thing? What's the difference? And what, what yeah. are those? Yeah. So um, a lot of times I feel like one, people hear the word genealogy and they immediately think of the 23andMe commercials or um, Ancestry.com. But mostly I've, I've heard when I ask people like, what do you think of when you hear genealogy? A lot of times it's the DNA. Um, that is a snippet of it. Um, but usually genealogy has been around for a very long time and most people might think it's from the elite. Um, but usually it's the tracing of your family through, and now actually maybe within the last half of the previous century, it's starting to become more um, research based and to make sure that you're fact checking properly um, and to be able to make sure that everything that is said about your family and documents is actually true. Um, so for genealogy can seem a little bit more, I guess, you know, researchy, sciencey, not everyone is into that necessarily. Um, but you can also, it, it's really more or less to get to the point, it's the tracing of your family and seeing where you came from. And that is through the research, that's through the DNA, that's through documents. Um, and then the piece of family history, I like to say they, they're kind of connected. In fact, they really are connected to give someone the whole piece of themselves. So that's where the stories come in. That's where maybe newspaper clippings come in. That's, that's where we find the how and the why. And the genealogy is the who, what, where. Mm -hmm. Combine them together, you get a sense of the whole person. Um, oh. So if anyone has any questions on that, or if you have any more questions mm -hmm. on that. I'll say, okay. yeah. So genealogy would include like the genetics like you just said, mm -hmm. and then family history is like the newspaper clippings. So what else is an example of genealogy? Um, so again, it's the DNA. Um, it is, let's say you go into Ancestry and you find these documents about a specific person, like when they came over, when they were naturalized, where they lived. So again, it's the who, what, where. Okay. Um, and then tracing that. Uh-huh. So genealogy, we talk about genes, it's talking about DNA, it's talking about our family history in that sense. Okay. Watching the line, looking from who came before us to us and being able to research who came before us. Mm -hmm. Also, um, another way to use genealogy is actually to find living people or heirs. Some people use it to find um, adoptive or biological families. Um, some people use it to find, let's say someone passed away and there's no living relatives. Who is the next of kin? We use genealogical research or genealogical, you know, the, the stuff that we use, like the tools to help mm -hmm. us, um, essentially find who those people are. Okay. And so we can go to like ancestry.com to figure that out or how do we find out like these, what are some tools that you use? Yeah. So ancestry is a big one today. 
Um, but it's, it's only one of many and it's an online tool. So not everything is online. There's a misconception that everything is online. Um, thankfully, because of all these wonderful volunteers, other genealogists, people are actually uploading and placing these documents from microfilm in libraries or archives online. So that way we have it at our fingertips to be able to actually search for it. Um, but Ancestry is a really big one. Um, there's the Family History Library and they have a website called familysearch.org. They're actually one of the biggest genealogical um, societies, I guess you can say, or libraries really in the world. They, have, they are based in Salt Lake City but they have libraries everywhere. So you can actually go to a library probably near you and access certain records or books and they have genealogists there on site. But the main ones in Salt Lake City and they have stories from people from all over the world. They have archives, they even have a, um, a, a granite mountain where they put a lot of these archives and um, these uh, documents and microfilms and everything inside a mountain because there's just so much stuff. Wow. And so you yeah. just like put your name in and then it's just like, here's all your family ancestors or like, do you have to like put in some links? Like if you know your great, great, great grandmother, you put that in and then figure it out or how does that work? In terms of if you're using online search engines? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the thing, it depends on what site you're using. Um, so Ancestry has a lot of ways to um, make the search a lot more precise but the thing is is that first of all again not everything's on there sometimes someone transcribes something that's you know it's not exactly what it says on the paper uh, so for example i was searching for my great grandfather's um passenger ship records and i actually had to go through certain microfilm with his naturalization records and the name was nothing like what it said on the passenger list because someone transcribed it really poorly but most of the time that doesn't happen Mm -hmm. um, it happens sometimes. So that's why you, you, there's a sense of patience and being, having to be able to like look up different, you know, different things and have different ideas and kind of like a detective, like you have to yeah. kind of think outside the box sometimes. Um, but with Ancestry or something like Family Search, you can start with putting someone's name down. Um, and the thing with ancestry or looking things online, just because it says the name, it doesn't mean that's the person. Mm -hmm. um, which is also why I think it's fun for me. I like the research. I'm a researcher. I, I, I like trying to fit the puzzle pieces together and try to figure it out. Um, but if you're looking to do the research and find the who, what, where, which is what we're talking about, like looking at ancestry, going onto these websites, um, even going to certain archives, maybe a library has an archive of all these different books, passenger lists, um, newspapers, um, or a local archive or, or a historical society. Um, those are different other ways that you can search. But to look online, it's, first of all, it's looking for dates that match, it's looking for names that match, but, and here's the thing, is that depending on who you're searching for and the time period, you have to understand that it may not be reliable or things might be off, but it can still be them. So you need to look in multiple places to confirm that something is theirs. Mm -hmm. um, not everyone likes that. I love doing that. And that's why I love giving this service to people. Mm -hmm. because it can be very tedious and overwhelming, but the part that gets really exciting is when we integrate the stories and I can present to you what it is that I found. Mm -hmm. And then the other side of it is, is why connecting conversations like you were talking about before and talking to your family is really important because even if it's not exactly you know, correct, it connects us. It's what makes us understand ourselves more and it also helps us with these stories to find those genealogical records to see the whole person. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really interesting. Um, so, I mean, I can go on and there's like a lot of different things. So anything, yeah. you know, like any questions you have mm -hmm. on that? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like for me on my journey with this so far, I have just done like a little bit of the pedigree and like, luckily I found my, dad and my mom have both done charts that go up to their great, great grandparents. Wow. So that's exciting. 
And then I just started having connecting conversations with my uncle on my dad's side and my grandma on my dad's side. And then like just talking to my mom about her mom who I never met and like seeing some pictures of her. And I want to do the whole um, connecting conversations things with her as well, just to learn more about some of the people who I've never met. And it's been really exciting to learn about um, them, especially my grandfather on my dad's side, because we have like a whole binder. Uh, I'll show the binder. Wow. Like, his like news wow. articles from when he ran for um, assembly. So like I like pulled two out. So like this is like an article on him being the Democratic woman speaker. And then, um, oh, I, I don't know. I thought this was like a cool article because it's basically like him going back and forth with the Republican Party. I think he was, so he was running as a for Democrat for assembly and he was in a region where only Republicans have ever been elected. Wow. So he's like kind of calling out the bossism of that and explaining, he said bossism in a talk before, oh wait, I want to like read it. Oh, so he said one party domination and political bossism go hand in hand and bossism breeds politicians who are not responsible to the general public but to the party bosses who put them in office. So I think it's cool, like, you know, to hear his voice, even though I've never met him before. And there's so many more articles that I haven't read yet. So I'm excited to just learn more about him through these articles. Mm-hmm. That's, that's amazing. So who had that binder? Um, so it was at my mom's house. So my dad has passed, but I guess he had it. And then I was telling my mom about this and she's like, oh, I have a whole binder about uh, your dad's dad. That's amazing. And that's, and that's the thing is a lot of times we think stories have either fallen away with the people who came before us. We think that, you know, once someone has passed or is gone from our lives, we can't learn about them. But you'd be surprised who in your family has actually taken the time to either remember these stories or to collect certain articles or certain memorabilia or photographs. I mean, that's amazing to be able to hear your grandfather's voice through that article. Yeah, and so I'm excited to like keep going with this more and like figure out more about different people in my family. And your um the your like kit is called your story starts here. Um so what does that mean exactly? Mhm. Mm so your story starts here was actually um it's something that I'm going to be doing as a group later um this year in September. So right now it's the connecting conversations piece that um, most people will have access to right now. But the idea of your story starts here is that I think we for two things. One, your story, I have a little like bracket around the why because your story is also our story because we are all kind of together in this web, this tapestry of the history and the presence of the world. A lot of times we see historical figures and we learn about other people, but we forget to learn about ourselves and about our family. But also our family has affected other families. Other families have affected us. We're all kind of part of this interwoven web. And the idea of it starting here is that I think a lot of times like we don't know necessarily where we're from or what came before us or even where we're going. And the best place to start is here, right? Just like on a map, you don't know where you're going until you know where you are. You can't find the directions unless you know where you are. And you're, you have your own story, but it goes beyond just you. It started generations before you. And even if you have children, it comes with the generations after you. Because on a, I know for some of some people listening, they may say, this might sound a little strange, but I honestly believe that we chose this lineage and that there's, there is lessons to be learned from the people who came before us, whether that is really scary stuff or really uncomfortable stuff or really amazing things. Um, and I know for me, I, I started doing it because I wanted to, I, I was, well, I've been doing it kind of for a while on my own and then one day I was watching one of those genealogy shows and I was like maybe I should just start like really getting into it and learning the stories about my family and then it was like once I started learning about the stories of my family I was like oh my god how I am makes so much more sense 
I was able to connect to more people in my family. I was better able to understand, you know, why certain things happened in our family, why certain people were the way they were, how our relationship was. And it's because of genealogical research and because of these stories and conversations I have with my own family members. And it's really awesome because I've also found family members that I didn't even know existed, mm -hmm. um, which completes the story even more. Yeah. And like, even if you don't believe that we choose our lineage, we're still deeply connected to our lineage. And it's still so important to understand and learn how you can evolve from it. Like, even just uh, like your parents, like, and how they treated you as a child, like, there's things that like that they did as parents that you don't like and that you want to change and grow from. And there's things that you love. And it's like knowing where you came from can help you like choose how you want to grow. Like I know in my family, there is a lot of stress and I want to evolve past that stress, but I also have to understand like where it came from and like, because it, it comes from somewhere. You can't just blame people for the way they are. You have to investigate and understand them. And I think it's really deep and connecting to do that work. Yeah, and I think it also is when we hear the stories from, from the people in our family, and then we also can back it up with, with documents, it's like, oh my gosh, like this really happened. This isn't just something that, you know, grandma made up. Because yeah. it becomes more concrete. You know, we're human. We, we sometimes need that logic and that concreteness to make sense. Even though, even if our intuition is telling us, I'm a big believer in intuition. I very much connect to more of the woo woo out that's out there very much so, but I also connect to the more rooted things of being human. Like we're both the woo woo and the human. <laughs> we're both. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when we connect those two things together, it, it, it just helps us to make more sense of it. Like my great grandfather, I kept hearing this story that he used to smuggle people into Romania because they were being persecuted. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, like what, what are they talking about? Like, that's really cool, but is this really true? Mm -hmm. um, and what's really interesting is, so the other part of genealogical research is also like learning about the history of a certain area or of a people, right? Again, it's like this multi, um, interdisciplinary study or work that we do as a, as genealogists. And so I get to read like these history books or, and, and understand that actually there were, there was a lot of horseback that had, like there was a lot of people riding horseback, helping people move mm -hmm. out from this region <laughs> into Romania and out into the, you know, Europe to leave Russia at the time, which, cause it was part of Russia. And I was like, oh my God, this, so this could be like a really big possibility. I don't have his actual story. I haven't heard it directly from him, but this is a big possibility that this happened because even the history books are saying that this is what happened in this small region, in this mm -hmm. small town, really, um, which is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the other part is too, is you can kind of see where someone gets courage from and that, you know, they're... E Two things. One, even, some of us aren't actually, you know, some of us are adopted. And so even if we're not necessarily directly related to someone in our family, being in that family, that has, part of that has been still passed down to us. So whether that is in your, in your DNA, because it's physically been passed down, or I guess energetically passed down from generation, we can also learn from the people before us and see the courage that they had. Mm -hmm. that as well so there's there's a lot that we can learn from from our family and from our ancestors and to understand it's it's quite remarkable really <laughs> yeah definitely like learning about my grandpa and seeing how he ran for assembly in a place that was like overrun by republicans and him as a democrat like stepping up like that inspires me to be like okay like i have this courage and me like this like strength this and like, it's like, it makes me want to emulate it more now that I hear about it and kind of like think of him as like a spirit guide or like, like, you know, that your ancestors like are looking out for you. And like, I don't know, I like, even if you don't fully believe in that, like it is like in your DNA, like if you're, if you're related to them, it's in your DNA or it's in your energetics and like, there's even, um, epigenetics and how things in the past life passed down through like methylation which is also really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. 
And so I know you touched on a bit about how um, this genealogical work can be healing. Uh, do you have any other examples of how it can be very healing? Yeah, um, so one of the people that I found in this research was a third cousin of mine. Um, and so essentially her two times great grandparents are my two times great grandparents. And her grandfather was my grandmother's cousin. So my grandmother, I'm very close with my grandmother she's still alive and so which is great because i get to share a lot of these stories with her and learn a lot and show her more about her family that she didn't know um but we found out because so two things is that my grandmother was close with the four brothers in that family but one of them the grandfather of my third cousin wasn't really around that much and so my grandmother always wanted to know like where he was she felt like he didn't want anything to do with the family um, and then at the same time, this third cousin I found knew nothing really about her, her great grandparents, which is my great grandfather's sister and brother-in-law. And so what we found out is through my grandmother, because I didn't know through her storytelling, because I found her through my own geneal my cousin through genealogical research, we were able to actually get together in person and share stories. And my grandmother, first of all, learned what happened to her cousin. He was actually very, very active in, in like social change. And he worked a lot to help, you know, he, he like met really crazy, amazing figures like Einstein. He met with Eisenhower, like he was like a big to do, but I didn't know that my grandmother didn't even really know that. Um, but he didn't want anything to do with the family. And that's kind of why there was a falling out. And we learned through my grandmother that his parents had a very abusive relationship, that the father was very physically abusive. She was basically codependent. He, she was very blinded by love. Um, my great grandfather and his brothers tried to protect her and she didn't want them to come near. And so my, essentially my great great aunt dealt with abuse and that sort of trickled down and separated the family. And because my grand, my, grandmother was able to meet with my cousin and my cousin was able to meet with my grandmother. There was like this sense of a relief and b just better knowing and understanding of what happened, like why it happened and to be able to like put a name to what happened um, and to see that cycle, um, what, where it basically came from. And um, I'm sure she could talk more to it um, because this is her experience and my grandmother's experience. But from what I've been told, um, it was just the sense of, I understand now. And I think that's the first part to anything is understanding. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. What was that all like when you were figuring, piecing that all together? Um, well, the, here's the thing is what's very cool about ancestry is if someone has a tree and you find people on your tree, you can reach out to those people if they have a public tree. So that's how I was able to connect to her. Mm -hmm. um, we have to remember also, not everybody is able or wants to connect. Um, there's been other people my family tree have reached out to and I haven't heard from, or I heard, I know other people who've done genealogical research and they've basically like slammed the door in their face. They're like, I don't want to know anything. Um, but at the same time, you get stories like this where I get to, I've, and I met another third cousin, like it's, it's really cool. Um, but basically searching for documents about a certain family member, I came upon her tree and that's how this originally happened. And then together, she and I actually worked together to find documentation about certain people in our family that were missing um, to better understand her great grandmother through documentation and research. Cause she's been doing her own family history. She dubs herself the family historian mm -hmm. and most genealogists out there will often are often like for the family, like they're the family's family historian. Um, not every genealogist necessarily is a professional genealogist working for other people mm -hmm. um, or organizations. Um, but to answer your question, um, if, if you're asking me like personally, what it, it felt like I, every time I find a document 
or every time I find someone, I get really excited because I'm like, oh my God, like this is something, this means something, this, this means I get to learn something more about myself. And so first of all, the moment she wrote back, I, I was literally very giddy because I was like, oh my God, a family member wrote back to me. This is so exciting. Um, and then being able to work together to find these documents together, um, to share our family history together was really exciting. And then when she came together to find her family, like down so we could speak and learn more about her family, it just, I, I could feel, like I was honestly there more so as a witness to what was happening because my grandmother was telling her stories and she was telling my grandmother's stories. And it was just, it was just like amazing to be there and to witness it and to, to just learn from both of them about my family or that part of my family. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, but yeah, it's no, cool. it's just, it's exciting that there's like so many people out there like already, like you could have a third cousin who's already also doing the genealogy work and mm -hmm. like it, it must be like, it's kind of common or like, I mean, it's, it's cool to see that both my parents, you know, they did their pedigree. Like it seems like most people at some point in their life start thinking about tracing their history and exploring their roots. So it's kind of a way that all people can connect and go deeper into their past. Mm -hmm. And so one of your talking points is you're supposed to be here. So how does genealogy prove that? Yeah. So again, it's kind of going back to this, to this lineage thing that when, when we're doing this research, you have to understand, or when you're doing your family history, it takes all these people who came before you for you to even be here. Like I, I remember on Mother's Day, I was like, oh my God, I have to post this. Just going up to my two, like two times great grandmothers, I believe there's like 13 women mm. it took for me just to be here. That's just going back one, two, three, four generations, 13 women. Now, if they weren't born or they didn't marry who they married, or the circumstances didn't happen that had happened to them or to the people that came after them or to the people that came before them, I would not be here. My grandmother was technically not supposed to be born. Her older brother died mm. and her parents decided to have another child in hopes for having another boy and they wound up with my grandmother. If she wasn't born, I would not be here. Wow. Like, it's just these circumstances. So even just being here is huge and in itself, like in, in itself is huge. Now, now take all these experiences that you're having. Just uh, not everyone agrees like it's supposed to happen or it, it, because now in the present time, we have the, we have the choice to work with the circumstances and to grow as people, but the starting point of you're supposed to be here, just, just think about all those people that came before you that it took for you to be here. And maybe you don't, you know, don't necessarily like everyone that came before you, but it took all those people for you to be here. Mm -hmm. And that's just like the starting point. Mm -hmm. It really is. Wow. Yeah. So where do you recommend that people start with this work? Yeah, so there's two ways. If you want to start, I think for most people, most people don't necessarily want to do like the genealogical method of starting this work. So, but if you do, number one is start with yourself because you know yourself the most and you can also write it out as much as possible for other people in your family to learn about you or the next generations to learn about you. But if that's not where you want to start, I think the connecting conversations piece that we talked about is really, really important and really key because that's where we create the connections and understanding of, again, we're supposed to be here and understanding who we are and where the healing begins because we get that this is where human contact creates the most healing <laughs> mm -hmm. right so 
I would start either writing your story, but if you really want to, and I think this is actually a really great place to start because this is where also our curiosity begins to flourish, is when we start having those connecting conversations with our family members. So using that free kit that I have, or the free guide rather, um, of connecting conversations is a really great place to start because sometimes we're just like, what am I supposed to ask? I have no idea. How am I supposed to do this? I don't know. So I've literally laid everything out and like 20 questions out there for you to just even get you started mm -hmm. those conversations. So yeah, that's where, those are the two places I would say start. Yeah. I'll definitely post the link for the connecting conversations in the description of this video. And I think what's really cool is like, you can make your tree and you can like, just like start seeing on your tree, like I, I got this from your uh, kit, but it's like, you look at like who you want to learn more about and mm -hmm. you can have your connecting conversations in a way to learn more about these people that you don't know a lot about. And then you'll start learning about more and more people. And one by one, you can do the connecting conversations to figure out about all these different holes in your tree or there's just people on the tree that you just have the name and you don't know anything about. So there's so many directions and places to go with that. Yeah, so um, if you want to take the connecting conversations and then start plotting out your tree, there's plenty of PDFs online that you can start with um, just to start mapping it out. Or there's um, also, again, like on familysearch.org, you can make a free account and you can plot your family tree on there. Or you can, like, again, you can print something out and just write it out or just write it on a piece of paper. But um, yeah. I mean, it's really interesting to see that lineage and to make sense of the connections. Um, I did that so many times as I was growing up. I can't tell you how many trees I've probably made every time I asked my grandparents or parents, like, who's this, who's that, what about them, blah, blah, blah. And then I would, because I'm a young kid, I would lose the tree and I'd have to ask again. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's to plot it out and to understand those connections just makes a lot more sense. Um, mm -hmm. to, to those stories, if you if if that's something you want to do, sometimes for some people, really, it is just the stories. Um, but being able to take those stories and plot them out and see it visually on a tree, just to understand who those people are in relation to you, I think is really um, helpful and healing as well. Because we're also saying and seeing those people's names and just saying those names out loud and seeing those names can be really even just healing, just in in that sense, or really really exciting or really gives us that sense of curiosity um to go deeper and to unearth more yeah mm -hmm. so you have the connecting conversations is there any other resources that you have out right now or some coming soon mm -hmm. so right now um i in well i actually have three things that i have in uh, other than that so one is that starting in september um i'm starting this group called Again, your story starts here, but this is going to be a 30 day kit and community where we walk through the different, like different phases to start this journey together. I also help you with a lot of the different pieces that may or may not make sense to you. And um, also for those that end up participating and really you know, work together with me. Cause sometimes with these communities, it can feel like, I don't know where to start, blah, blah, blah. But if, if you're really in there, I'm really there to help you. If you have a question, I can help do a little bit of research for you. Um, but it's really there to help you get started and getting curious and understanding your family history, um, which I'm really excited about because most people have told me, I have no idea where to start. So this is exactly where you can start. So this is the story of yourself. This is the tree. This is an even more in-depth connecting conversation. We get really in there. So that's starting in September. And then um, right now I work with clients one-on-one. -on -one if you just want to look for, you know, look for your tree, get a better understanding. I also work with other genealogical societies or, um, gene or other genealogists and we work together to uncover certain documents or things that are needed. Um, but I do work one-on-one -on -one with clients right now. Um, I just finished with a family and it was just so awesome to see the grandmother and granddaughter connecting together. Um, she emailed me afterwards and said, I feel so much closer to my grandmother. I'm like, well, that's exactly why I do this. Mm -hmm. um, so if, you're, if you want to even just get started or you want to learn more about your family tree and kind of the direction where your family is from, 
um, I have that already. And then um, I also have a VIP program or a more, I should say a more deep dive. And where that goes, um, we not only do that genealogical research together, but it's kind of like a mix of everything. And if, you know, you get more of those connections, you get the genealogical research for me, but I also go into meditation. Mm -hmm. I also go into more of the, the self work along with the genealogical work. Um, but with the genealogical work and the family history being kind of the main focus and bringing those two together. And at the end, you get a beautiful book of life um, a, and something to share with your family. I put together in this beautiful binding. We end it with a beautiful ritual, essentially. And um, yeah, like that's really, really exciting. I'm, I'm so stoked for that too. So awesome. those are three other ways. So you've got your, so just so people know the name when they go to my website, it's Your Story Kid and Community, which starts in September. Discover Your Story is the one-on-one -on -one genealogical work we can do together, um, which by the way, you also get a report at the end of that. So you have something to share with your family as well. Um, and then you have the Open Your Story um, deep dive. So if you want to go even deeper with it. So those are the three other ways if people want to work with me or get to know more about their family, they can do that. Yeah. Wow. That, those all sound so amazing. And I'm so excited for all of them. Um, mm -hmm. All right. So I, if anyone has any questions, please post them below and I'll try to make sure Jacqueline gets to see them. Mm -hmm. If you like this video, please like it. And if you want to see more, uh, please subscribe. And Jacqueline, where can people find you? I'll post your website below. And then if any social medias you want, I can also post below as well. Yeah. So my website is Your Story Genealogy. Um, and genealogy has an A. It's not gene <laughs> genealogy. It's genealogy.com. <laughs> Um, or you can find me on Instagram at j.m.wallach. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Bye.